Hello and welcome to Business on the Wire. This week saw the Reserve Bank of India put out its Monetary Policy Committee recommendations and findings. There was concern about the economy, of course, but one interesting observation that they put forth was a new proposal that allowed one-time structuring of corporate loans. To understand better what the context of this might be and what, more importantly, the repercussions might be, joining me are two gentlemen in this discussion, M.K. Venu, who's founding editor at The Wire, and Subhash Chandragar, who's former finance secretary. Gentlemen, thank you both for joining joining in. I want to start by setting a little bit of a, you know, a, a backdrop to this entire conversation. Venu, why don't you walk us through the, the what and why of this proposal? Why has it been set up? It's not just for corporate loans. It seems to be also to be extending a line of help for MSNEs. Uh, but, you know, what are the main features of it? Uh, so, Mitali, uh, what strikes me as the most critical uh, is that K.V. Kamath has been chosen to uh, to head a committee uh, which will essentially look at uh, potentially bad loans uh, uh, that will occur post-lockdown. Now, that is a specific mandate. Now, yeah. uh, there have been bad loans before, pre-COVID, uh, as the RBI report recently uh, uh, kind of uh, it suggested 8.5% of the total credit. Now, RBI also said that post-COVID lockdown and uh, uh, and balance sheets getting damaged uh, because of lockdown uh, could lead to further 5% of total credit uh, going going bad. Now, now there is a narrative that, that this additional 5% of, uh, of total credit, which might loans, might, which might go bad, uh, which works out to roughly 5 lakh crores. You know, if you, uh, I mean, if you look at total credit, which is 100 lakh crores and 5% of that. Now, now, for that, uh, uh, and these would uh, uh, be in a lot of sectors, uh, Mitali, which were doing well before COVID, right? Uh, especially okay. tourism, hotel, uh, you know, airlines, essentially doing all right, right? So, because of lockdown, uh, so so this committee has a lot of subjective, will exercise a lot of subjective judgment, of course, uh, use a lot of data also, to, to, to actually figure out which sectors and which uh, deserve this uh, one-time restructuring and there, there are norms, there are entry norms uh, and most interestingly, KV Kamath is not uh, as head of this committee, this committee is not recommendatory, this committee will also uh, will, will, will suggest how to go about things, will monitor post uh, restructuring how the companies are, uh, uh, whether they are adhering to the, 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 the norms uh, uh, set uh, 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 for, for the restructuring etc. So there are a lot of implementation role too. So in my mm. view, in a sense, uh, KV Kamath has been brought into to, to really look at uh, a very very critical part of the of India's economy. In, and India's economy has has not taken off. One big reason was the financial sector, financial system logjam pre-COVID, uh, which we all know uh, the, the history. Now yeah. post-COVID, that that situation gets aggravated, and how KV Kamar deals with it will be very, very important for me because there are a lot of other dimensions, although in the name of COVID, certain uh, reliefs are required. But there are other negatives in my view, uh, which could creep in like, like the IBC, which was a big reform uh, brought in during Mr. Garg's time when he was in the finance ministry. Uh, mm. Now, whether, whether IBC will, set, will, will, uh, will get weakened for the, uh, uh, you know, various categories of uh, various sectors where uh, you know, where loans are getting restructured. For instance, power sector was already uh, outside of IBC uh, as, after the Supreme Court order in 2018 uh, November. So, how many more such sectors will go outside of IBC? These are all matters of concern for me. Yeah. So, I'm going to draw into, you know, many parts of what you've laid out, Venu, but let me get Mr. Garg in this conversation. Mr. Garg, I want to, uh, you know, do a bit of a timeline with you as well to get to this point with this KV Kamath headed committee. On the 24th of March, uh, you know, the finance ministry said the threshold for invoking insolvency proceedings was raised all the way from 1 lakh straight up to 1 crore. On the 17th of May, they put in a special insolvency resolution framework for MSNEs and said, hey, you know what, we exclude any COVID-19 related debt. Then came an ordinance in June which said that uh, now you cannot even file an application by the res resolution professional 
and here we come to what the reserve bank has to say where importantly mr galt they are also saying that such a restructuring will not invite a downgrade in the asset classification now for people who don't understand a lot of this jargon sir you know simplify this and just explain to us what situation the banks now stand in when someone comes and says i've had covid related stress but um, you need to help me restructure this thanks mithali i i think we we should remember that we are basically discussing credit into the system right the banks are meant to provide credit that is their business that is their bread and butter uh, and uh, the situation in the country for last few years especially um, has become that uh, the credit has got quite disfigured so to say um, there's a lot of non performing loans which means that the borrowers are not making money they are not in a position to pay and therefore they are not paying to the banks which in turn affect the banks profitability banks business etc um, the ibc was uh, designed to provide a new avenue a very effective avenue to banks to recover whatever non performing credit they can recover from the defaulters and the biggest instrument which was provided was that you can throw the promoter out you can throw the owner of their business out if he uh, if he is not paying so that threat actually made the ibc a very potent a very significant instrument to recover credit to restructure credit when we decided now about 6 months back or so um, uh, that um, so many of the loans will go outside the purview of ibc and later on to postpone or suspend the ibc for all fresh cases for about a year what we are basically doing is that we are putting the ibc into a deep freeze we are getting the or we are not making this instrument available to the banks and therefore the banks do not have recourse to this instrument available now you have uh, the covid stress so covid made the credit situation still worse right venu mentioned that about 8 to 10% of the uh, uh, book of the banks was non performing banks have about uh, 100 lakh crores of credit 10% of that would mean about 10 lakh crores of uh, loans are not performing but sometimes when we look at the la- uh, overall numbers we actually miss out where the real uh, stress is of about 100 lakh crores of loans about 12 lakh crores are agriculture loans which is a very different thing they are actually the way they have worked are not loans they virtually no interest is charged on them uh, there are there are waivers and also let's take them out there are about 25 lakh crores of personal loans which are housing credit cards vehicle loans and other things these are asset based and these are given to those who have the means to basically the salary earners and the people who have a steady uh, source of income there that was also not the segment which was affected adversely as non performing right? the remaining book which is something like about 60 65 lakh crores uh basically the industry industrial loans about 30 35 lakh crores and the services loans about 30 odd lakh crores is what was the stress the biggest stress was in the industry book industry book was actually non performing by a very wide scale about 20 to 25% of the industry book was non performing so what covid has done is that besides worsening the stress for the industry book it has created two other stresses one in the services book there is lot of stress yes. now so you mentioned about the travel companies transport companies and others 
lot of services entertainment movie halls others they are all now into a soup in a very difficult situation and what you would have noted uh, from the yesterday's policy um, uh, there is this personal loan book also which was a first class prime is now facing large amount of stress and the how do you deal with the stress when the ibc is not available to you in any case personal loans were uh, not uh, uh, sort of amenable to ibc process that was that part was never brought into effect earlier so the only way now here there is a weird convergence uh, of the interest the banks don't want the visible stress to be open yeah. therefore they are happy if either moratorium is provided or the loans are restructured so that they can show that that their loans are standard loans and they don't have to provide uh, for for the provisions and they don't require additional capital for them it is in their end it's also in the interest of the defaulters the pay people who are uh, not in a position to pay industry service or personal loans and therefore they are also happy uh, to uh, to get the moratorium and i understand because the unfortunately when you are in a situation where the real kind of stress is not visible to people um, because the moratoriums are there you have to indirectly read it so if 65% of the msme book availed moratorium if about 40% of the personal loans were under moratorium it seems that there might be about 40% to 45% of the loans of these three categories which will avail the moratorium and will get restructured we'll all be happy that these are treated uh, as standard loans but in fact those were the uh, uh, those th- those are the really uh, infected or non performing loans this is a short term kind of thing these are so short term palliatives they don't these don't address the real banking situation in fact the way we have come so far we have virtually converted banks into fiscal agency so to say and especially the public sector they are yeah. uh, really not banks can you let me get you to you know but... something on this that uh, you know i just want to preface what you're going to say with the fact that the bankruptcy process was also a kind of debt restructuring itself but first you know the ibc yeah. was put into a one year freezer even though people are saying it doesn't need to be put in the back burner for so long do you think we you know this is basically you know um A, a way of circumventing and just just pushing ibc out of the system like it, it it's out we're done with it it is pushing so, the Vitali, I, 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 i i i yeah no no i i i broadly agree with the what uh, mr garg said uh, you know especially on ibc i am in agreement with uh, mr garg it was a big reform which was done by this government and this government claimed i Uh, bankruptcy code as, as its biggest reform if i'm not mistaken now 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 what is now happening is the ibc process is getting uh, weakened uh, in the name of uh, it was post covid we have to be very careful now in the name of covid uh, it is it will be very easy uh, to 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 weaken uh, the ibc process further and uh, mitali while you're right that ibc also could uh, leads to restructuring through the court process but don't forget ibc brings in a lot of transparency in ibc what happens is the power shifts from the borrower to the lender and the lender is is, is has uh, in this case the banks especially the public sector banks uh, uh, would have through the ibc process would have had uh, you know much greater sort of leave uh, in recovering their their loans now the moment a government kind of intervention comes in which is what this kv kamat committee would be uh, uh, so what it will do is it will introduce a lot of subjectivity in the way uh, sectors are chosen uh, like mr garg said a lot of service sectors will definitely be, will will be eligible airlines will be eligible hotels uh, will be eligible for uh, a two year restructuring now what happens if in two years uh, 
airlines and hotels do not recover to the extent that uh, they all have fixed costs, right? And if if they if they are not able to uh, you know stand on their legs in two years, uh, we should also therefore I I feel that that while uh, I would have been happy if the if the RBI had also given a roadmap for when the IBC will will be brought back in all its uh, uh, you know in all its uh, whatever you know uh, uh, I mean in its entirety its entire framework would be would start becoming applicable to uh, to these loans which which would be restructured for two years uh, there is another problem which which I would I would want Mr Garg to throw more light on. Uh, there are some sectors which were out of IBC even before COVID, partly because of the Supreme Court intervention when the Power Sector Association went wow. there along with some textile companies. And in that, my surprise what was that State Bank of India, which is owned by the government, he gave an affidavit to the Supreme Court saying that it is all right, power sector should be treated on a separate footing and we can sit and negotiate with the power sector. Now, when will these things will get resolved? So, by and by, what I see, Mithali, is that Power sector is out. Then some of the post-COVID, uh, uh, you know, sectors which have got damaged, they will be out. Now I want to know when will they come back to the IBC framework? Uh, I think the government should give a roadmap on that. Otherwise, you know what Urjit Patel has written in his book. Uh, uh, basically, he has said that the IBC process has got compromised. This government bring, uh, did bring uh, India brought this reform for the government, and Urjit Patel says that. Until mid 2018, later 2018, uh, the government stays committed to IBC. But then something happens before uh, 2019 elections. Uh, I think uh, uh, the you know the various big industry lobby groups they have their way, uh, and I mean that's that's the way our system works. So so we have to be very careful how we deal with this. And of course. Uh, there will be another problem now. Uh, uh, the farmers, as Mr. Garg pointed out, farmers have also suffered the, uh, during COVID, right? Their costs have gone up, uh, etc. And uh, they may also tomorrow make a claim and this will get politicized that if you are giving industry a two-year loan restructuring and even personal loan restructuring for, uh, for individuals like you and me, then yeah. farmers might stand up and say, what about us? You know? So, I, I think we are we are going down a slippery slope, in my view. Yeah. We have been for a while, you know, especially with so the uh, abusive uh, relationship with these firms. Um, yeah, Mr. Gurk, I want to come to you and you know, uh, line out your answers. Can I, with some can I, I think the, uh, the issue which uh, uh, Venu commented on, yeah. um, and I think that's very important. Uh, we, we should um, have a little bit of a discussion on that. Um, See, IBC was a desperate measure to bring some sense and order in the uh, badlands of credit in, in the country. Right? Um, uh, so much of loans were turning non-performing. There was so much, uh, so many of the credit restructuring schemes going around. There was uh, non-recognition of quality. We didn't know. So this was the credit situation had become very, very bad. And this brought the freshness, this brought, the, brought it transparently to everything that, yes, if you don't pay, um, we go to the IBC, you will be thrown out, somebody else will come in, and whatever losses we have or here that we will take it. That was a very fine. I think this was the biggest reform uh, which has been carried out by this government. Um, uh, and this started resolving a lot of people started paying themselves without even going to IBC. The bank's recovery improved and all this was very potent. But what happened was uh, they there was a there was a basic reluctance on the part of the banks to actually use the IBC. Though this instrument was for them, it was for meant for their benefit. That is why the government had to amend uh, the Banking Regulation Act. Um, make the RBI enjoin upon banks to go to the IBC. Those uh, well big cases were forced upon the banks to go to the IBC. Then some more were brought in, and roughly about 50% of the uh, impacted credit or the uh, bad credit was taken to IBC and brought a lot of good results. But what perhaps uh, uh, Urjit Patel led RBI uh, 
made a mistake was that it, it, it went on to the extreme. It thought that for every credit problem, there is a simple single resolution that you take it to the IBC and nothing. Power sector was a very different, it's a very different animal. The promoter probably has 10 to 15 or 20 percent at best a uh, role in managing or running the power unit. There are states to pay, power purchase agreements, coal and other, so many things happen. The Supreme Court judgment in coal and other things. So it was not a simple solution which could have been tried or which could have worked that if, the, if you had taken power companies to IBC, this would not have worked. All those things, there, there are in fact quite a few power companies which went to I, um, IBC um, and none of them got resolved. Uh, they would not recover anything. So this Urjit Patel and company sort of refused to recognize and that one size fits all kind of approach that we have only this and nothing else created problems. But what has now happened is that you have moved to the other extreme. You have made what power sector situation for every sector. Today, this restructuring scheme is universal. It is applicable to every sector. IBC has been taken away. So pendulum has swung completely on the other side. It has undone the IBC. It has undone whatever credit discipline and reform which was being brought into the system. KB Kamath committee, etc. will not do anything. Yeah. They may debate, they may bring out principles, etc. and this and that of restructuring. But at essence, in substance, all that it would mean is that a lot of loans will get restructured and will still be called standard. Right. We have unfortunately de-standardized the definition of standard loans. Yeah. Today, the MSME loans, which are being structured and restructured for the last two years, are called st standard loans. If you read the policy uh, document yesterday, even RBI uses the term standard within quotes, because these are not standard loans. And now, all these restructuring, which will be done for all other sectors, uh, loans, they, would, they are not in a position to pay. They would be given moratorium also, but they would also be treated as standard. They are not standard. So that is the real crux of the problem that we have. We are actually do going, perhaps, going to the hit at the bottom of the credit system. Exactly. So let me ask you two pointed questions then, sir. Do you think that with the, you know, under the garb of COVID, this is the end of IBC as we know it? And secondly, do you think in terms of transparency, we are going to take several steps back because from what we understand at this point, banks can club it all together under one sector. Uh, you know, they don't have to give any details really on who and what and you know how much the hemorrhage is for individual companies. I entirely agree. You see, uh, today from the bank's loan book and the classification and their income and the stress recognition, you don't know what is the status. You have to look elsewhere. See the, the credit rating downgrades which are happening in the system. I think uh, of about uh, 5,000 to 5,000, 4,500 companies which have been rated in last six months, as many as 4,000 have, have seen downgrades. Only about 500 to 600 have seen upgrades. What is that telling you? That is telling that the credit situation is terrible. But you would not know this from the bank side. All these food and restructured loans with stress thrown down under the carpet will be shown as standard. So I see a very serious problem about the credit uh, dispensation and the credit culture. You know, let me uh, you know, wind down uh, with my final question to you, because just to play the devil's advocate, you know, one would say COVID has created stress. There was a lot of um, 
there was a lot of imploration really to find some kind of solution for companies that has struggled with covid was this the best solution that could have been found because it looks like what we are doing is rolling the situation into a much bigger bank loan crisis you know come a couple of quarters ahead there are two solutions to my mind uh, to the re- uh, to the problem which we are facing it's a very serious problem yeah number one those businesses which can revive and survive and can do well and there are number of businesses which are doing well it's not that everything is uh, down and under the information technology digital financial many other businesses uh, you saw uh, one big company raising enormous amount of funds lot of other people are also raising funds right so that's not a uh, the problem that in ever everything is well i think those businesses which cannot revive is the problem and those businesses which will see the reset the airlines travel entertainment cinema halls and many others they will be fundamentally restructured it's it's no good to put them and their loans under the carpet any longer yeah we should recognize that stress and find a way and that is where i say the second point now if these restructured businesses can survive for example cinema halls or the airlines or other businesses can survive with some assistance then the fiscal has to provide the assistance that part where those are not viable those are not business going concern kind of thing that much assistance has to come from the fist side so these are the two solutions those businesses which require re- 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 restructuring or which can restructure with or without fiscal assistance should be restructured and the rest has to be closed there is no point in postponing the misery for another two years for this then you same question to you yeah vitali i mean what mr garg says is a uh, is a tourism you, uh, companies projects which cannot recover have, will have to be closed now but but that we will know that only in the ibc right when when a company goes to i i i agree with i mean that's my only disagreement with mr gar in power companies he said could not go to ibc because in ibc they couldn't have been resolved <coughs> then you close them down i mean you can't uh, see mitali i'll tell you there's another big problem with the indian system which which mr gar will also agree with oh, most of the uh, most of the npas which have developed over the last 10 15 years they have developed in the infrastructure sector now in india we have had the system where some 10 groups corporate groups who are politically well connected they have gone into all kinds of infrastructure and they are the ones who actually come a general election they they exercise their clout they manage to uh, they manage to uh, you know get out of the ibc framework and the same guys will will also abuse covid and and i i'm telling you the our biggest problem is we have not been able to so far uh, mitali provide exemplary punishment because from these very big crony groups which have taken loans each group has taken 2 lakh crore 3 lakh crore i mean the the list is mind boggling they they have not they, if you see the record there is also willful default they have diverted the money that they have taken for uh, certain projects to various other things uh they i mean those all those cases are going on mr garg also is aware finance ministry has gone to supreme court on the under invoicing of coal imports equipment import case now but we we just pretend as if everything is normal you know and we and if we continue to pretend that power sector uh, because of policy issues uh, these guys should be treated as a separate uh, category then those 3 lakh crore will never come back we we will have to decide uh, uh, whether are they viable or not viable or should they okay. should they be taken to ibc closed down or not closed down and we can't keep kicking the can down the road that's my that's my only uh, submission okay gentlemen completely out of time but thank you so much for joining in brilliant conversation i hope it at least raises some questions about uh, what seem to be very very ad hoc solutions for what is our biggest crisis right now the liquidity and credit system crisis thank you both of you for joining in thank you very much thanks a lot To receive instant updates on all videos from the wire click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon pay to support independent journalism
Click the link in the description and choose the amount you want to pay.